Okay, in this video we'll take a look at how we actually put the products into each of the individual tabs. Um, again, we're going to do this when the form loads. So first thing to do is to go to view code and we're going to make our own little uh, method here just to, to do that. So I'm going to make private void and we're going to say add products to tab panel. So I'll we'll try and give them meaningful names. So what will happen here is hopefully we're going to look at each of the panels that we've created or each of the tabs here and then we're going to fill each with the various different products. So there's various steps to this so we're going to just break it down into chunks to start off with. Just like we did before I'm going to start off with a for each and what I'm going to do here is this time I'm going to look at each of the tabs that have been created. So the tabs are all tab pages so for each tabbed page TP okay, in tab control 1 which is the, the main bit we've just put on the form dot and again we know we can look at each of the pages because we've got the tab pages uh, collection at the bottom there so we're going to look through each of the tab pages one at a time now as we're looking through them for each tab page we're going to fill them with the individual products now we're going to need to do another object query here to be able to do that so we'll take a look at and just refresh on how we do that now so first thing is we need to say we're going to do an object uh, query and remember it might just ask you here to resolve that so I'm just going to put a using in for that so there it is nice to be done and we need to specify what we're looking for so this time we're actually looking for the products that's what we're hoping to get back so to have a product uh, give it a name so I'm just going to call mine filtered product so that we can filter it down equals a new and then a new object query whoops object query table product and then we're ready to hopefully specify the SQL statement that's going to run remember I said it is a little bit different but it's essentially the same thing so what we're going to look for here is select and we're going to say value I'm just going to call these uh, just P for product. I think it's probably the best thing. From, and I want it to come from my TBL product table. Uh, whoops, products rather, isn't it? As P for product, where, well, I won't put the where in just yet. We'll just get all of the products and we'll just populate the list so you can see what happens. So we'll just get everything for the time being. Uh, that in. Oh, we need to pass it in the, the context of our coffee shop entity. So hopefully now we've got a list of the products that we can begin to work with. So now what I want to do is add each of those products to the tab page. Now we've got each of them here. So what I'm going to do now is say for each. So we're going to loop through the products this time. TBL product. So table. I've already got table product, so that wasn't very that wasn't very clever of me, but. Uh, I'll call it T uh, prod so we don't get confused. Uh, for each table product, and that's going to be in our filtered products. Okay, so we're going to get from the filtered products each of the individual products. And then what we're just going to do in this instance, we're just going to add a new button for each of these products. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a new button. So button B equals new button and I'm just going to set the text of that button so b dot text is going to equal the current product dot text dot description sorry so that'll set the actual description on each so that will work out hopefully quite nicely and then the only thing I've got to do is add that button to the tab page so to do that I just need to add a control so just need to say TP for tab page dot controls dot add and pass in my button so hopefully what's going to happen is going to look at each of the tab pages it's going to query all of the products and then it's going to add buttons for each of them so let's just see what we end up with if we run that so far might end up with a couple of bugs oh I know what we haven't done just close that 
we've I haven't actually run that yet, so we need to cr create the tab panel in the constructor, but then we actually need to to run that, don't we? So add products to panel. If we don't do that, we're not going to see anything. Save that and run that. So let's open the till and see what we get. If we get any errors, and you can see here we've got in hot drinks we've got small coffee, cold drinks we've got small coffee, and food we've got small coffee. So at the moment we have got a result here. It has added a product into that but at the moment it's not quite right we haven't got all of the products and it doesn't uh, we don't obviously want the same product to be in each category so we'll now look at how we go about correcting that okay so first thing we're going to see is why we only ended up with one product when we know in the database we've got several well what's actually happened here is all of the buttons have appeared one on top of the other so the first thing we're going to look at is how we can uh, use something called a flowed layout so that we can actually uh, flow each button one after the next. So we'll do that first of all. I'm just going to close this down. So if I just go back into my form here, um, in the toolbox you'll see there are different types of containers and one of them is flow layout. Now this is nice because every time we add a control it will appear next to the other control so whereas before all of the buttons were slap bang on top of each other we're going to utilize that to spread the buttons out so let's go and do that first of all so I'm just going to go into the view code again okay so none of the code needs to change at the minute but what we do need to do here is instead of just basically adding the buttons straight to the tab page what I want to do is add each of the buttons to my flow layout first and then add that flow layout to the panel. So what I'm going to do up here is I'm just going to create myself a new flow layout. So flow layout panel, so FLP equals new flow layout panel. So we've got a flow layout panel that we can we can use. Now instead of adding the button here to the actual tab page, I'm going to add those buttons first of all to the flow layout panel. Then once I've finished adding all of the products there, the final job, so once that for loop is finished, is just to add the flow panel, sorry, the flow layout panel to the tab page. So tp.controls.add and we're just going to add that flow panel. So now, hopefully if we run this, let's have a look at what we get. If we open the till, you can see that we've got the products all there and they've been flowed into that panel. The other odd thing though, we're not really making use of all of the space, but we can see here it's definitely worked. So we'll go and correct the spacing first of all. So we'll just come back into this. The reason it's not filling it is we need to say how to dock it to the parent component. So what we're going to do here, when we've created the flow layout, flow, I can't say that, flow layout panel, uh, what we're going to do is dock that and we're going to dock it to its parent container. Um, it's not really difficult to, to do a docking on that, so equals. And you'll notice that when you go equals, you get this enumeration type where it says dock style. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dock it. I'm just going to want it to fill its parent component. So hopefully that will mean now if we run it with that simple change, when we view the till, there we go. The panel now obviously is filling that because our product buttons are you know going across the page. Again, the other problem is here our buttons really aren't big enough. So again, if we wanted to change that, just go back into the code. We've got our button here. So what we want to do is just give the button size. So I'm just going to say b.size and equals. Now I just need to give it a new size and pick what size I want. So I think about 100, 100 should just about do it. Again, add that bit of code in save it, run it and just have a look at what your results are. So let's just see. Okay, much better. So now we've got all of the products displayed. Now the only problem is again, all of the products are in all of the categories. So the last job really is to be able to filter the products by the correct category. So we'll just add that part in now. So we're going to go back into the code and we can see we had our select statement up here but it was selecting all of the products. What I'm going to want to do is just basically keep track of which product to select. And to make it really, really easy for me, I'm just going to use uh, a simple index of i just to go through. So I'm just going to set up a little int. Oops. 
put it in the wrong place. Uh, just going to set up a little integer i, and I'm going to set that to 1. Uh, and basically, I'm just going to use that to represent each of the indexes of the tab page. So what we'll do now is down here is we're going to just add a little bit to the end of this query saying as p and we'll say where and well what we're looking for this time is where the product type equals something so where p dot product type equals and then I'm just going to append onto the end of that i so this time it's going to look for each of the categories one at a time and return them so once I've got each of the categories all I want to do next is every time the loop goes round, add those to the panel in the usual way. So there's not really uh, many changes that I'm going to need to do there. The only thing is that I'll probably just need to cast that to, into a string, or it might not like that. So let's just pop that in, and let's give that a run through and see what we get. Oh, before we do that, obviously we're going to every time we've we've finished there, we're just going to need to increment i by one. Otherwise, uh, it's just going to keep adding it to the to the same tab, so let's just run that through. Open point of sale, and there you see we've got the small coffee and the large coffee in hot drinks. In cold drinks, we've got Coke and food, we've got chips. So that's now divided them uh, nicely between the categories. So that's looking good. The next video is going to be where we take a look at how we can actually, when we click on a button, add something into the list box using an event handler. And then we'll actually look at how we build a custom button so we can actually pass a product to that list box.